All right, well, thank you everyone for coming. We are Algae Alert. Um, see you the next slide. And here is our team. Um, next slide. And so before we start going into our project, I want to prelude our presentation by acknowledging the trauma and abuse many Native American tribes have faced and are facing in the US, especially with academic institutions such as our own UC Berkeley. And it's important to our team, as well as the Fung Fellowship, that we understand this issue in order to make sure that we can grow and be more accepting and understanding of our indigenous communities. And so I've also included a resource here and we can also provide more if anyone wants to read a little, read anything more and learn about the background of these impacts and previous encounters. And so next slide, and we can start uh, going into our presentation. Here's just a brief background of what we're going, going to be going into with the background of the problem and an introduction to our partners. Um, we'll start jumping into an idea of ideation process and our final prototypes. Next slide. Um, and now with the background. Next slide. Um, and so many of us have probably seen bodies of water which are covered in blue-green algae type layer or film. And so these bodies of water are usually slow moving and still. And this layer of blue-green algae, AKA cyanobacteria, um, are often harmless, especially when there's very small quantities. However, a large buildup of this algae can cause an increase of cyanotoxins. And these are essentially waste molecules that come from the metabolic processes of these bacteria and can be harmful to both marine life as well as humans that interact with infested water or fish in these waters. And so right now, the Trinity River, um, part of uh, the Hoopa Valley Reserve and that runs through the Hoopa Valley Reserve, faces the challenge of mitigating these algal blooms as well as mitigating some of the cyanotoxins that are flowing from upstream blooms. And so we've partnered with the Hoopa Valley Tribe as well as EFC West, who are members of the larger umbrella group, uh, Earth Island, who work with indigenous groups around the globe. Um, next slide. And so in order to help solve this problem, my group was given the task of designing and implementing a coordinated region-wide blue-green algae mitigation plan for the Trinity River system, as well as help the Hoopa Valley Tribe educate their community members so that they can avoid and protect themselves from blue-green algae toxins. Next slide. And so our initial plan took two very straightforward pathways to this, how might we? Next slide. We needed to mitigate and educate just like it we do for many environmental problems. And therefore, after the first half of the semester, we had designed three branches of our solutions. We had contacted and coordinated to groups local to the Hoopa Valley Reservation, such as Humboldt University and other experts, to start a driftwood project meant to create cooler environments for recreation and fish spawning where algal blooms couldn't grow. Uh, we also began designs for a system using UV light to kill bacterial blooms and prevent further toxin release. And finally, coordinated with both an offshore team as well as the local US team to create a machine learning system to create a predictive model, which can be used to assess the safety of recreational waters over the course of the year in the long term. Next slide. However, at the end of March, we had the opportunity to meet with Ken, an expert in blue-green algae blooms, as well as a member of the Hoopa Valley tribe. And after meeting with him, we had to reevaluate what was important to the tribe. We also understood that some of the efforts the tribe had already made and what they saw to be most helpful for them. And this is when we decided to take a little bit of a leap of faith. One of the core values we had discussed as a team going into the design process was that we needed to be both respectful and open to the ideas of the tribe and that we didn't wanna force any solution our partners were not comfortable with implementing. And so we decided to shift our focus and our how might we to something quite different. And so we moved away from our focus of mitigation towards a mindset of empowerment and access. And this brought us to our new how might we. We decided to create a solution which would empower the Hoopa Valley community to access intra-tribe cyanobacterial information and demystify its meaning. This meant increasing access to information and its interpretation for different demographics and different learning styles. Next slide. We designed two prototypes, which are an app that targets nine, uh, nine to 14 year olds and a text hotline that targets adults. To engage younger demographics, next slide please, uh, we gamified the educational material on cyanobacteria. We were inspired by games like Homescapes where you restore a dilapidated mansion and Flappy Bird, which is a simple but super fun game. We came up with the idea of River Run, a game where you complete challenges to help maintain and restore the health of a river ecosystem. Next slide, please. Our user is 12 year old Julian, a middle schooler and Hoopa Valley tribe member. He loves playing games on his phone as well as swimming in the Trinity River with his friends. During a recent swim, he noticed a bad smell coming from algae patches in the river. He doesn't know much about algal blooms, but wants to learn more because the health of the Trinity is really important to his identity and culture. Um, next slide. Here is our uh, app prototype and we incorporate the user feedback as well.
features River Run, Alerts, News, and Learn More. He starts with the game and sees that there's a salmon who needs his assistance to swim up the Trinity River. Through this dialogue with the salmon, Julian learns about harmful algal blooms and cyanobacteria. If he's unsure what a word means, he can click for a definition and then continue playing. He learns about the harmful impacts of cyanotoxins on animals and humans, what the blooms might look like, and the fact that they can clog the salmon's skills. And so the salmon needs help, which is the point of the game. Julian starts with level one, which is to avoid three clumps of cyanobacteria. When we were first ideating, we actually had the fish dodging pipes, exactly like Flappy Bird, but we received feedback that the game should depict a more realistic environmental issue impacting the river, not just a bunch of pipes. So we made the fish dodge cyanobacteria instead, which makes sense scientifically as well because cyanobacteria clogs their gills. Julian has now completed level one and can move on to level two, but let's skip ahead because you get the point. After each level, the salmon continues the dialogue and informs Julian about the causes of cyanobacteria and harmful algal blooms, which include climate change and nutrient runoff. Skipping forward again, Julian has now finished 10 levels, so he gets a simple trivia question to check his understanding. This one asks, what must he not do if he sees cyanobacteria in the river? Let's say he gets it wrong the first time, he gets some feedback and gets to try again, and this time he gets it right. By this point, Julian is worried about getting sick from cyanotoxins since he realizes that he swims in the river a lot. But he gets some reassurance. The Hoopa Tribal EPA monitors several locations among the Trinity River to determine if it's safe to swim. Julian is encouraged to check if certain locations are safe for swimming by tapping the alerts tab. We'll explore that later. He's also told that there's an algae alert text hotline that also sends information about water safety. He's encouraged to tell his parents about this hotline. One last task before unlocking the next levels is to clean up the cyanobacteria. This feature was suggested to us during the user focus group with Hoopa tribe members. Julian finds it very satisfying to see the cyanobacteria clumps disappear. And now he can move on to the next 10 levels. Skipping ahead again, Julian will continue to get these trivia questions after every 10 levels on various topics like deforestation, dams, and nutrient runoff pollution. So he continues to learn new things throughout the game. Now we have these additional features, all suggested by people in the user focus group. Let's say Julian is curious about the Learn More tab. Here he can explore different environmental science topics, such as these different types of algae. Next, he checks out the News tab and sees news articles relevant to his local river system. He sees an article about the Klamath River Dam Removal Project, and another one about political conflicts regarding river flow management, which could greatly impact his tribe. And lastly, he looks at alerts to check if certain areas are safe to swim. Green means safe and red means unsafe. Now Julian is reminded of the text hotline that he read about while playing River Run. He decides to tell his mom to subscribe to the hotline so she can stay informed. Uh, our second prototype is the algae alert hotline. Our team was inspired by another fun project called Shotline, which lets users call to sign up for the COVID vaccine. Shotline has the ability to provide information to users without internet as well as utilizes volunteers for data collection. We were lucky to have some guidance from the students of Shotline, which helped us build our hotline. Another inspiration was the already existing dead fish hotline that is also accessible to users without internet as well as contributes knowledge on cyanobacteria blooms. We wanted our hotline to be accessible to those without internet service as well, but also be more user friendly and easier to gather data with, so we landed on our current text hotline. From a focus group, we had, oh, next slide, please. From a focus group we had with the members of the Hoopa Valley tribe, we altered our initial hotline prototype into what it is today. A few major suggestions we had were to add an option for users to send in photos of cyanobacteria so a user would easily be able to report and volunteers would be able to catalog it. Another was to add an option to send in GPS coordinates so the location of a cyanobacteria sighting was accurate and was easier for a user to provide their location easily. Additionally, there was a suggestion to integrate the hotline into our app. These suggestions were considered for our final prototypes. Next slide, please. A user such as Jane, a resident and member of the Hoopa Valley tribe, and Julian's mom found out about the hotline through her son's time on the app and decided to try out the hotline herself. Since Julian likes to play in the river in the summer, Jane is concerned with the cyanobacteria levels and has wondered how to report sightings. With the hotline, Jane can now easily check on cyanobacteria levels and receive updates when levels change. She can even report when she sees a cyanobacteria bloom through a few easy messages. Additionally, Jane can access more information on cyanobacteria through our easy to read infographics. 
Now we'll be showing a live demo of the hotline. All right, can you, can everyone see my screen? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, great. All right, so when I first opt into the LG Alert hotline, I'm gonna have two options, but first I'm gonna text opt in. And again, sorry if there's a lag, um, but the first option I'm gonna receive from the hotline is to either report a cyanobacteria sighting, and the second option is to receive a current log of the cyanobacteria levels in the river. Because this is my first time opting into the hotline, I will automatically receive a current log after I text opt in. As you can see, the logs of cyanobacteria at four different locations along the river are now, are now available to me. The colors align with the safety of the water as shown in the game. Green indicates healthy water, yellow indicates that one should be cautious, and red indicates harmful levels of cyanobacteria. Now I'm going to mimic how one would use this hotline number to report a sighting. So I'm going to text the word report as the hotline tells me to. The hotline's then going to ask me to send a photo of the cyanobacteria that I have found. If I'm unsure if the algae I've seen is actually harmful, I can click this link to get more information. I can then look at these photos to help myself identify the kind of algae I'm seeing. And then I'm gonna send a photo of the algae to the hotline. After I send the photo, the hotline's going to ask me to identify the location of the algae. If I want to send a GPS location, I can do that. And next I'm gonna ask the, the audience if anyone in the audience wants to put in the chat which location I should text back um, after the hotline texts me back in one second. So if someone wants to put A, B, C, or D in the chat and then I'll text back. All right. Then I'm going to text back that. After I identify the location, the hotline can use this information to update their records. And that concludes the hotline demo. Next, we will discuss the long-term plans for our project. And I'm going to stop sharing the screen. OK, so for our long-term plans, we'll talk about some of the limitations of our prototypes and then go into the projected visions for both prototypes. So um, currently the hotline of the game app, they're both education tools and they're made specifically for the Hoopa Valley tribe. However, there is the potential for minimal engagement with the tribe's elder population because of reduced familiarity with technology. In addition, our prototyping is still in its early stage development because we revised our how might we, and so there is the uncertainty with the project supervision. In addition, these tools don't address the environmental issues that are happening upstream of the river from the flow of cyanotoxins, as well as the political issues, including the role of agricultural businesses and the role of the Bureau of Reclamation. In the next slide, um, this is the projected vision of our app. So we plan to expand gaming features that increase the variety of playable characters like beavers and bears. And we also hope to develop a choose your own adventure so that the game can reflect the realities among other partner tribes like the Karg and the Yurok tribes. And then in addition to these gaming features, we hope to further engage the community by collaborating with teachers and incorporating the game in learning spaces. And this will give us more feedback on how young people interact with the game. In terms of the game's longevity, we want to we plan on applying for grants to fund the developmental costs and if the tribe agrees, also implementing ads in order to generate revenue. And then for the next slide, this is the projected vision of our hotline and we plan to develop the functionality of the features for integrating images of algae and reporting sightings with photos, as well as developing the GPS location reporting feature. And then in addition to these features, we want to engage the community by testing the user experience on a larger population with members from other partner tribes and also collect feedback with our Qualtrics survey to gauge the level of awareness surrounding harmful algal blooms. Um, for longevity, we plan on applying for grants to fund the developmental costs and then presenting its functionality at intertribal events like their annual Sovereignty Day in August. And so this last slide here um, is really to, um, as a handoff path for how our solutions can be made comprehensive and implemented in the future. So we compiled a spreadsheet of grants and we wrote grant essays that the tribe can use and this future funding will help operate these projects. I know my time is up, but for the last slide, I just want to 
thank our partners, EFC West and members of the Hoopa Valley Tribe, Jill, Ken and Gary. Um, thank you for your time, your encouragement, your insights. It's been really humbling to work with you also. Thank you. All right, good job, everyone. Um, so uh, to open up question and answer, I wanna turn it over to Sarah. Um, Sarah, are you here? I am here. Wonderful. Yeah, and and I don't really have any questions. I mean, I, it's actually been, I think, uh, developed even further from when I last saw it. And I really love the idea and I love uh, the fact that they were willing to kind of break away from, from just the app to something that actually would be accessible to the entire tribe. Because I recognize that working with tribes is, especially a tribe as remote as Hoopa can be really, really difficult. Um, and the options aren't as big necessarily or as grand um, or as wide as it would be for um, different communities. I also really, really appreciate the acknowledgement you gave in the beginning and uh, the respect you've given to the tribe. And I know that the tribe, Ken in particular, is just super jazzed and excited about everything that you proposed. And he really, really enjoyed working with you guys. And so did I. And um, I also appreciate your, your willingness to pivot because I know there was a lot of effort put into kind of preventing blue green algae. And it just turned out to be such a complex issue that it was, it was really, really difficult to tackle. Um, and there's just a lot of, a lot of everything, politics, everything that goes into blue green algae and um, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope uh, you learned something too. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so teaching team, now it's up for, it's up to us if we have any questions. I have a question about the game. The game kind of felt like a funnel towards the, the hotline or to get the, uh, you know, a young person to, to engage with an adult in order to make the hotline this part of their daily infrastructure. Um, is there an intention to, to I mean, there was some, I, I, what, what other ideas have you guys uh, thought about in terms of the game and how extending it into other curricular or um, educational costs? Um, I can't answer that. So um, we developed the app and the game. Um, we sort of tailored it initially toward, or currently it's tailored toward a Hoopa Valley tribe member, but there's definitely a lot of potential for it to become a more general education app. So um, between that and the first step, um, our, the middle step would be uh, looking to expand the use of the app to beyond Hoopa tribes, but to other tribes in the region, such as the Yurok and Karuk tribes. Um, so it could be an intertribal thing. It could sort of um, increase collaboration between tribes. It could increase data sharing. And so getting those communities to engage with each other and then uh, looking into launching into, you know, more, more general audiences, um, that would be like a future step as well. I can make one more point really quickly. Um, uh, the tribe itself already has like a curriculum that's set up with a lot of like information for younger gen, like younger kids, honestly, K through 12 kids um, do already receive like education through their schooling. And so this is sort of something that would hopefully get them to start thinking about what they're learning outside of the classroom as well, because they'll hopefully be engaging with it even when they don't have a textbook or have to watch lecture and so on. Um, and if I can, I would like to add one last point, which is um, Akash was asking how it connects to the hotline. And the idea is this is like an intergener multi-generational aspect of a prototype and it's um, these prototypes work in tandem. So while the kids may, you know, be playing, you know, and then their grandparents are like asking them what they're playing, they may see this hotline option. And then like the parents can help guide the grandparent with the text and stuff. So it's really the idea of this is to be multi-generational. Thank you. Um, we have a couple more minutes for question and answer. Is there anybody else even in the broader class or amongst our judges who would like to jump in and ask a question? Just one clarifying question. Um, by the way, great job. Um, you took some risks. Uh, everything Sarah said, I also agreed with. Um, so some bonus points there. Um, how, again, the, the original app game, 
how, what's what's the introduction to that? Is that in the classroom or is some other? How how do you find out about it? Uh, I can uh, jump in real quick, and then if someone else wants to add, they can add as well. Um, one really good idea that um, Jill, who is a member of the tribe of Hoopa Valley, recommended was that um, they have a festival called Sovereignty Day, and so during that time they do a lot of um, like go hand out t-shirts, hand out wristbands, do some educational flyers, which we also have prepared a few flyers, which we can hand them. And hopefully on that day, they could introduce the hotline. And that would be like an initial introduction to the tribe to the hotline. In addition to that, because it can link with the education that they already are getting in their schools. Um, we also hope the teachers would be able to um, uh, introduce it to their students um, as something they, could, they can engage with outside of class. And they can also manipulate what information that they're getting in the app so that if they want to gear it towards one particular like set of information or if there's something they want to give the kids, they can also edit that themselves. Great, okay. Uh, by the way, the hotline way more dynamic than I ever imagined. So great job there. Yep, excellent job. And I think that brings us to the end of our time with this group. So team three, thank you so much. You all did a wonderful job and um, I'm hoping we can, uh, yeah, see you guys ex extend that relationship with the, with the tribe and NEFC West especially.